sax player wants to play faster. In today's video, I'm going to show you a couple of things you could start doing today that'll help you play faster, cleaner, and with more solid rhythm. My name is Jay Metcalf, and on this channel, I make videos to help you become a better saxophone player. Now, this week, we just hit 10,000 subscribers, which is amazing. Uh, and if you're not yet one of those people, I'd love for you to join the list by clicking the subscribe button below. Later on, I'm going to tell you about a worksheet you can download that has the lick that I played in the introduction, as well as some other exercises to practice all of the stuff that I'm going to go over in today's lesson. So stay tuned for that. If you have your saxophone handy, pick it up now and keep it in your hands while you watch this video so you can try out some of the things I'm going to go over. So my question for you today is, how is your finger position on the saxophone? When you play, do your fingers rest on the keys most of the time, or are they more flailing about a few inches away from the keys and, and the horn most of the time when you play? If you're not sure, record yourself playing something or just play something in front of the mirror and watch your hands. Most developing saxophone players have a lot of room for improvement when it comes to their hand position and finger position. And even advanced players can gain a lot from working on what we're going to talk about today. Now, you might ask, what's the big deal? What's, who cares if my fingers are out like this or they're close to the keys all the time? What difference does it make? Well, imagine you're playing a sport. Imagine you're playing golf or basketball or tennis or whatever. And whenever you swing the golf club or swing the tennis racket or shoot a free throw, you're making lots of unnecessary movement with your body that has nothing to do with getting the ball in the hole or, or getting the ball over the net. Any extra movement or any unnecessary thing you're doing when you're playing sports is going to really hinder your ability to perform well. It's the same thing with playing the saxophone. Don't make things more difficult for yourself. You gotta move your hands in an efficient way and eliminate all excess movement. Let's sort out your finger position right now. Correcting poor finger position is one of the easiest things we can do that's gonna have a huge impact on our overall playing. You don't have to be a professional saxophone player to play with good finger technique. This is for everybody at every level. If you're a beginner, let's get things started on the right foot by getting some good habits from the very beginning. If you've been playing for a while and you're, you're not uh, playing with really solid finger technique, now is a great time to start improving that. You're going to notice big improvement in your overall playing once you do this. So the first thing we're going to do is define what the correct finger and hand position is on a saxophone. Your fingertips should be resting comfortably on the key pearls, and your little fingers should be resting on the G-sharp key and the E-flat key. Your left thumb should be on the thumb rest with just the tip positioned over the edge to action the octave key. Your right thumb should be under the thumb hook at a position that allows your fingers to rest rounded and comfortably on the key pearls. Notice the relaxed curve of my fingers. You don't want to have straight fingers like this. You want the motion of your finger on the key to be straight down and not at an angle. When you play the palm keys, your fingers should not come off the saxophone like this. So now try holding the saxophone with this ideal hand position that I just described. Remember to keep your hands, wrists, shoulders, neck very relaxed. It's extremely important to release any tension you might have in your body. Stand up straight with good posture. We need to get this position right without playing a single note before we can move on. Memorize what it feels like to hold the saxophone with perfect hand position, good posture, and while being totally relaxed. Make this your default position. Now, you might say, that's all well and good, but the problem happens when I start moving my fingers, and that's where my fingers start coming off the keys. That's why step two is we're going to play one note at a time while maintaining this perfect default position. Now, if you've watched some of my other videos, you may already be practicing long tones over the entire range of your instrument to work on sound and embouchure and intonation and all those things, whatever. Add 
finger position to the list of things you focus on while you're practicing your long tones. When you play the notes that have a lot of fingers down, like D, let's say, be careful that you're not squeezing the keys down with a grip of death. This is, a very, this is another really common mistake that people make in the other direction. It's not as visible, but it has the same result, which makes our techniques sloppy and it messes up our rhythm and it's generally not good. So if you're already practicing your long tones over the full range of the instrument, as you should be, adding this focus on the fingering position is not gonna add any time to your practice session. Your goal here is to train yourself to always play every note with this ideal relaxed hand position. Step three is where we take whatever it is we're working on. It could be scales, arpeggios, anything, doesn't matter, and we apply this focus on perfect hand position. Let's take our concert B-flat major pentatonic scale as an example. I want you to play it up and down very slowly and focus on maintaining that perfect default hand position for every note. Now the key to this is going slow. We play fast the same way we play slowly, just not nearly as good. So if your hand position and technique is lousy at a slow tempo, when you speed things up, it's gonna be even more lousy. Now before you tell me, I can't practice slow, I don't have time for that. I need to get better fast. Can't you tell me the quick and easy version of all of this? This is the quick and, well, the quickest and easiest way to develop fast technique, to play cleanly, and to get a solid rhythm. Do you think I've got loads of extra time to practice? I don't. I wouldn't be telling you this if it wasn't the truth. Take it from somebody who has had a lot of trouble with this and only realized very late in the game how important it is to practice with meticulous attention to details. Believe me, it takes far longer to correct bad habits down the road that have developed over time than to just avoid them in the first place by going slow and practicing with very good technique. You want to get into the habit of playing things slower. And by slower, I mean at a tempo where you can play things with no mistakes and it's slow enough that you have the time to think about other things than just getting the right notes. Let's call this the Goldilocks tempo. You need to understand that by the time you're ready to play things fast, the notes need to be automatic. You can't be thinking about what notes to play. Your mind needs to be free to think about lots of other things. If your brain's processing power is all used up thinking about what notes to play, then there's nothing left over for just making music. In other words, it's all the other things that you're doing that allow you to play fast musically. It's having a strong embouchure, having good finger technique, having good posture, being relaxed, a solid sense of time, good breathing. All of those things is what makes the sound that's coming out musical. You, it's not just uh, I'm able to wiggle my fingers really fast. Now, in order to execute all of those other things, we need to have practiced slowly to give our brain the time to process all this information and make it happen automatically. So I want you to try to enforce the 80-20 rule when you're practicing technical difficult things. 80% of the time, you want to be practicing stuff at a super comfortable tempo where you can get everything right and you're not going to be getting mistakes so you can concentrate on all the different aspects of playing. And then for no more than 20% of the time will you practice that same thing up to the goal tempo. <laughs> This means that for 80% of the time, 
We don't have to worry so much about what notes we're playing. We can really think about everything else that we need to be thinking about in order to sound good. You can actively be improving all the other aspects of your playing while enforcing good habits that are going to carry over when we speed things up. If you're already able to play something at your goal tempo cleanly with no mistakes, then you don't need to spend a lot of time practicing it. But we end up wasting a lot of time practicing things we already know how to play. It's not really practicing. It's satisfying to hear yourself play something that, that sounds good. And you should do that. You should indulge in that and allow yourself to sound good from time to time. But if you spend all of your practice time just sounding good at playing the same things you already know how to play, you're not going to progress very much. Now, I know a lot of people have doubts about the logic of all this. People say, how can playing slow help me play faster? Or they say, listen, uh, all those musicians that can play really fast, they must be practicing really fast all the time, or else how could they do it? I bet you my brand new saxophone here, that if you practice things the way I'm explaining to you now, over time, you're going to see a significant improvement in how you play, in your accuracy, in your rhythm, and how fast you can play things. Those of you who have had success with this, please comment below to help convince the others that this method really works. I've made a worksheet that anyone can download for free. It covers the lick I played in the intro, as well as some other exercises that are going to help isolate uh, some problem areas for fingerings on the saxophone so you can improve those things. And it also has some step-by-step -step instructions on how you should be practicing something to get it up to speed. Click the link in the description below or the one on screen here to get access to the PDF worksheet. That, and then work through the different exercises. Put on the metronome at your gold, Goldilocks tempo, whatever that is, and practice this stuff in front of a mirror so you can control and you could see how you're, well you're doing with your fingers. Apply this method of practicing anything technical that you're working on, and let me know in the comments below if it helps you play cleaner, faster, and with better rhythm. If you found this video helpful, please click the like button. Check out some of my other videos over here that you might find useful, and check the description below for more links. <laughs>